Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. We are starting a brand new series here on my channel today. If you've missed my last few videos, I've been delving into the world of flying space rock thingies, nebulas, solar systems, star clusters. I've been trying so many different things. I'll link the videos here if you've missed it. Now, of course that came over from the UV resin water effect. And honestly, I have been in love with it. However, we are moving into steampunk. Now, steampunk was on my original list of things to do this month. There's so much linked down below in my Amazon storefronts if you want to get your hands on any kind of steampunk themed inclusions for your resin. I did an unboxing from Amazon. Everything's linked below. We're going to be using all these gorgeous little bits and bobs. And also, upcoming video, this, guys, stop it. Wendy over at Toonpish Crafts has started making her own silicon inlays. I bought this one. She did send me two, but I bought this one because I knew I was doing steampunk. Okay, we are using UV resin. So my PPE is on. I've got my gloves on. I have got my mask, my respirator on. This is an epoxy resin, so you treat it exactly the same. And the first thing we're going to do is go back to that water drop effect that original effect with the uv resin here we are creating planets now this is going to be multi layers three layers minimum four if you count in the background i guess we go three or four layers lost count i'm not going to pretend i didn't <laughs> i did kind of lose count over the few days it took me but first layer we are going with some uv resin blobs these can be planets asteroids you know whatever it is you want them to be they can be it they then go under my uv light now my uv light here is a nail lamp for doing your own nails at home it goes up to 90 seconds and i actually cure this uv resin twice at 90 seconds so 180 seconds pretty much enough like i don't think you need more than that you just want them to be cured and then over the top of that we are placing down our powders now this question has come up yes you can use mica i am using chameleon powders by let's resin purely because a i love them and b they do have a color shift so they definitely add a complete dimension to your uv blobs they they color shift basically they make them look more 3d I want to say realistic, but we planets don't look like this, <laughs> so I can't really use that word. Now, the colours you choose are completely up to you. This is very much a go with the flow, relax, put some music on, chill out kind of project. You don't want to get too tied up in rules. Very much a chuck it all in. Do what you want with whatever you've got. Shove it wherever you want to shove it. And like I said at the beginning, trust the process hope for the best and all will be well. <laughs> On top of this, we've added in some of the silver foil and we're just doing a very, very light tap of the super sparkle white. Again, what products you choose is all very much down to your own personal preference, especially your colorways. You might not even like any of the colors I've used here, but this is what we're going with just to show you to show you the effects we're going back to the mica splashing now so you would have seen this in previous videos we're just grabbing some of this chameleon powder by let's resin on the bottom of our brush and we're just flicking it on now i will say one thing here off the bat be careful not to cover too much of your mold in the first layer we're going for depth we're going for a multi-layer effect we're going for this kind of really interesting visually interesting piece where we can see through the different layers and see the depth of all of the items that we're putting in so what you see me doing here is creating some patterns on the very first layer don't do this we will talk about it more in the video um, just avoid this step just put your resin in your first layer with your uv with your glitter maybe a couple of splashes of mica but i did do a little bit too much here than i would have hoped for and hindsight is a wonderful thing i know really wonderful um so yes don't do this <laughs> so this is the step you're seeing me do miss this step out just basically carry on as if you're not doing this part here but still you know what <laughs> i'm still chuffed with the results so if you want to do it do it um i'm just giving you my thought processes as i go along now that purple and that pink were plain mica powders they were not chameleons i'm just using chameleon on the uv resin 
blobs. Next up, we're going in with some of this mixed glitter. You would have seen this in previous videos. This was sent to me by I Love Mixed Media and it's a cluster of, cluster? It's a mixture of stars and plain sequins and also small glitter pieces. Now we are spraying these with our alcohol as seen in previous videos. This is 99% proof isopropyl. The difference between this and all my previous videos is that we are pouring clear resin now. We are not doing black at this point because like I said this is a multi-layered piece. We're not filling these up, we're really just pouring in a super thin layer of resin. I'm not even bothered at this point if it reaches the sides, I just want enough resin in this first layer to be able to lay down some of my metal inclusions. Now this is steampunk inspired. I'm so excited for my steampunk series. I cannot explain it. I have got some videos coming up, one of which my patrons are watching as we speak. I've already sent it over to them. It's my literally my favorite, my favorite video this year so far, 100%. <laughs> but that is coming up. You guys will get to see that very, very soon. So here we are, we've placed our metal objects in you can really place anything in and also this video was filmed before I did the Amazon haul so all I have for steampunk right now is all I have <laughs> it's literally these cogs mostly so next day day two layer two we are going in with some more UV resin and I'm rapidly running out of UV resin at this point I honestly had to put another order in at Vista and grab me some more because yeah I could feel the bottle almost empty and you don't want all them bubbles coming out at the end next up we're going to put it under the uv lamp again same thing again 90 seconds twice that is all i do for my pieces how many planets you put on the second layer again completely up to you this is very much your thing your project you do what you feel like doing which is why i was doing yeah what, <laughs> what I felt like doing at the time um yeah it's all very much a learning as you go kind of thing never done anything like this before never put such a combination of different techniques into one project but again we're using our chameleon powders to dust over those uv blobs any color you wish do whatever you, makes your heart sing um but yes i went back in with the chameleon powder now i am a let's resin affiliate so all of that detail will be down below it for 10 percent off at let's resin now as a close-up you can see i've still got gaps i've got areas where there is no resin at all um so this time we are going back in with the flicky the flicky that's it that's that's what we're going to call it the flicky technique <laughs> grab your bar brush shove it in flick it on Again, I'm still keeping in mind that I want gaps. I still want gaps. I want my, my background colour to still be seen through. A few more squirts of that isopropyl alcohol. And this time around, I decided to add in some black glitter. Now, let's resin. Didn't even realise this, guys. Um, you would have seen this a few months ago in a, haul, in a Let's Resin unboxing. They do huge glitter tubs. And I figured that this black glitter might do something. It might do something. It also might not. <laughs> but I figured we're here. We're chucking it all in. We might as well just chuck it all in because we can do what we want. Um, in then more stars. You've seen these before. Um, more stars. Where you put them again? entirely up to you but I just threw them around because you know there are some days where I take where I take things a bit more seriously but with this project I was like just lob it all in like what's the worst that could happen it's going to be pretty either way because of the colors and what we've used so we know it's going to be pretty we might as well at this point just have fun and just <laughs> chuck it all in basically chuck it all in Next up, guys, I should have my gloves on here, but honestly, I didn't want to put another set of gloves on. I'd already gone through two sets of gloves in this day um, that were covered in resin. So I just made extra cautionary, I took extra cautionary care to not touch the resin. Do not touch epoxy resin with your bare hands. It can cause all kinds of skin conditions. This is serious stuff, guys. Serious stuff. So when I see people not using gloves, it hurts my soul. So apologies in advance that you do not see me with gloves here. It's because I know at this point for the next 20 seconds, I'm not going to be physically touching 
the resin. I didn't want to just waste another pair of gloves. Okay, I'm dropping these in at this point because again, I don't want to get close to it. I'm just dropping them in. Where they land is where they stay. We trust it. We just trust it. At this point, it's time for the glow in the dark powders to come out. A few of you have said, try glow, try glow. I was like, okay, I will. This is the next day. So this is day three, layer three. We are throwing in some of the glow in the dark powders by Let's Resin. These powders are stunning, absolutely stunning. And they are intense. They glow intensely. So I'm really hoping we're going to get a glowy background on this piece. If you missed Halloween, I made a whole box using these powders and they were mind-blowingly glowy. There you go. Say that. <laughs> Say that in one sentence. Um, at this point, I've had to take the lid off of my UV resin um, because, yeah, I I can, I can barely get anything out of it. Um, and I decided, you know what, let's have some fun. Let's throw in some of the UV, um, no, not UV, glow in the dark. Some of the glow in the dark powders into the UV resin. So what's left of my UV resin, I've put blobs. I'm now pouring powder into it and we're going to set them. So now again, this is day three. Guys, look at this. How stunning is this oh my gosh it's giving me 90s vibes why is it did we have glow in the dark clothing in the 90s i think we did i think we might have at least i think i did um once they are fully cured again layer three fully cured i'm going over the backs of those just to reinforce to add a little bit more of that glow powder in the hopes that we will get some spectacular results it's time to finish this, guys. So technically, this is layer four, the background. I am using the Vista Resin Pigment in black. Again, as always, black is the best color, hands down, to put on the backs of your micas. Are you ready? Oh, I love it so much. I love it so, so much. So, so much. We have lost a lot here, guys. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said, don't do this. Don't have all of that powder in your first layer. Can you see what that's done? It's really inhibited. It, it's taken, we've kind of lost the view. It's closed the door on the depth. It, it has, in some areas, we've got really cool depth. Like here, we can see right to the background. I don't know if my camera's picking it up, um, but I can see right down in, um, in some areas. But that purple and that pink, that I put down in layer one, it really has. It's literally pulled the curtains closed on some of that depth, but it hasn't taken away from the overall finish of them. I think they look so cool, spacey, steampunky. This one here, same, unfortunately, the same. I think that UV blob is tad too big, <laughs> tad too big. There's this area here, it's like the most stunning cluster. I can see right down in, but again, that mica, it's covering. So where I think I've got a gap, I've got a space. Um, actually, you know, mica powder really does a good job of blocking. It really does a good job of blocking. So layer one, guys, keep it clear. Just keep it clear. Don't do what I did. Keep it clear. I'm still obsessed. I'm in love. It is fantasy, it's magical, it's everything I wanted them to be. Do they glow in the dark? I hear you ask. Do they? No. <laughs> no, they don't. Look at this. You could just see a planet, a planet, maybe two. <laughs> What a disaster. It's not a disaster, guys. It's a lesson. It's an absolute lesson. I just blocked out too much light. And that is because I put too much in layer one. Even layer two. D maybe don't throw your powders down until layer three. Because we would see so much more. So much more. Now the edges themselves are beautiful. And you can almost see here, I did half and half unintentionally was not intentional I, I had no plans for that um but the clear three layers 
went up halfway in the mold you could if you wanted to this is a faceted diamond cup edge coaster you could if you wanted to decorate the outside with your silver gold or bronze pen that would really pull out all of the details in those metal inclusions that would make it pop however I didn't want to do it I like the edges the way they are didn't want to do it I hope you feel inspired I love these I will see you all in the next video bye